Welcome back to the channel. In our last video, we had the JP Weiser's Yellowstone Whiskey commercial. A lot of you really enjoyed this project and had a lot of questions about it, but none more than the one I actually expected to hear the most, which was how did I animate the horses on the bottle? Now to refresh your memory, the shot was captured from a top-down angle handheld as I was pulling the camera up. And as you can see in the final shot, we have those horses on the label running, which might seem like a minor detail, but it's little things like this that add a whole lot of production production value to an overall commercial. So let's hop on the computer and go over how this was done. Here is the project for the Whiskey commercial in Final Cut Pro. And as you can see, here's our top-down shot, the horse is not yet animated. A very important consideration, and this is crucial when you're doing an effect like this, is you're going to want to leave it for one of the last things you do in the editing phase. Now, because this process is somewhat tedious, you definitely don't want to have to do it numerous times. So save it to the end when all of the pacing and the order and the timing of the shots is done and dialed in, then you can add this animation and you won't have to redo it multiple times if there are revisions to your commercial. So what I'm gonna do here is zoom into our timeline a little bit. I'll click R on my keyboard to access the range tool, and I'm just going to select the clip we want to animate by clicking and dragging. Now we can export this clip on its own. I find that ProRes 422 works just fine for stuff like this. And now we're going to open our exported clip in After Effects. I know this is probably a shock to a bunch of you to see me doing this not all entirely in Final Cut, but to do something like this without After Effects would be incredibly difficult. With our clip in After Effects, we want to make sure that our playhead is on the very first frame at the start of the timeline, and we're going to use the pen tool to draw a mask around our horses, just like so. From there, we'll want to use a tracker on our mask to track the position, the rotation, and the scale of the horses throughout the whole clip. You can see that After Effects does a really good job at automatically tracking the mask to the movement of the horses on the label. So from here, we can set the blend mode of our mask to subtract, which will effectively do just that. It will subtract the horses from the shot. Step one of removing the horses is now complete, so we can move along to step two, which is filling in the blank space. We're going to want to make sure that our content-aware fill window is open. We can can play around with these settings based on your own clip. In this case, I'll be using the surface fill method. Now, in many cases, you could just go ahead now and generate a fill layer immediately and you could get a pretty good result. In our case, with this shot, I found I got a much better result after creating a reference frame. I'll click over here to create a reference frame and this will automatically open a single video frame in Photoshop. And at this point, you can fill in the mask with any method of your choice. I'm using AI generative fill because it does a really incredible job with minimal effort. I personally like to expand and feather the selection a little bit first, and then we can click generate to fill in our selection. We'll pick the one we like best, and if we're happy with it, we can save our reference frame and go back into After Effects. Here you can see that our reference frame has automatically been added to our composition. So now all we have to do is generate our fill layer with the content aware fill window. As you can clearly see, After Effects does a great job at filling in that mask. The horses are completely gone. It might not be 100% perfect, but it's pretty darn close. And remember, we'll be putting new horses over top, so we don't need absolute perfection anyway. Now, of course, the next step is we're going to need some sort of animation of horses running to apply to our bottle. Now, full transparency, I am not an animator. I don't know how to create a cartoonish horse running silhouette. So what I'll do instead is I'll head over to Storyblocks and search their library for a horse animation. A lot of these could work well, but I like this one since it already has three different horses built into one video clip. Storyblocks is a must-have online subscription service for all creators because you can use as many assets as you like for your personal and your client needs. It's absolutely perfect for this kind of stuff, which I make for my clients, which is why I've been using it for so many years now. And whether it's stock footage, motion templates, animated backgrounds, overlays, you name it, Storyblocks has it. Even those trendy film burn transitions we're all crazy for nowadays, Storyblocks has those too. Make sure you check out Storyblocks by going to the link in the description below or going to storyblocks.com slash Daniel Schiffer to learn more. Back in Final Cut now, and we can use a keyer to remove the green from our horse clip. We'll then want to make a new color adjustment to turn these horses into silhouettes, and we can do this by turning down the exposure slider all the way. Obviously, we can't see the horses anymore because there's no background, so we'll temporarily bring in a generator as a new background just so we can see what we're doing. Now, if you remember on our bottle, we're going to need three horses. I'll go ahead and duplicate this clip twice, giving us three separate layers, and we can isolate a 
different horse on each clip using either a mask or the crop tool. And now that we have three different horse silhouettes separated to individual layers, we can go ahead and start working on adding these to our bottle. We'll start by taking our new bottle clip with the horses removed and place it over top of the old bottle clip. You definitely don't want to delete the old one because we're going to need it as a reference as to where we're going to place our new animated horses. We're going to temporarily disable the new bottle clip by clicking V on the keyboard, and we can drag all three horse silhouettes over top and trim them to the duration of the shot. Now making sure that our playhead is at the very start of the clip, we will one by one match up each horse to the correct size, position, and rotation as referenced on the original bottle. We can do this with the transform tool and once that looks good, we can highlight all three horse silhouettes and merge them into a single compound clip. From here, we can lock in that first frame with a keyframe on our position, scale, and rotation. And then we want to grab the playhead and move it to the last frame of the clip and adjust the orientation of our horse clip accordingly to line it all up. A preference of mine is to set the start and end keyframes to linear. And from here, we can just scrub through our shot and make little adjustments along the way to ensure that every time the horses deviate from the position they should be in, we can line them up and keep those horses in their rightful position on the bottle. Now, if we're happy with how this is all looking, we can go ahead and disable the old bottle clip and re-enable the new one. And boom, there you have it. We now have animated horses on the bottle. Feel free to integrate the animation a little bit more by adding film grain or adjusting the color, whatever it takes to just blend those horses with the shot and make everything look more cohesive. There you have it, mystery solved. That is how I animated the horses on the bottle. Here is the original shot and the final shot side by side. You can see just the elevated production value you get from that animation. I also enjoy the addition of the sound effects to tie everything together. And myself, as well as the client and many of you out there, we're very happy with this final result. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. Make sure you give it a like, subscribe, follow me on Instagram at daniel.schiffer, and I'll see you in the next video.